Okay, we're back. We're live. It's uh, given Tuesday after Memorial Day. And uh, this is Hawaii, the state of clean energy with Ramsey Brown. Um, and he's with uh, Hawaii Energy, which is uh, dedicated to energy efficiency in the state of Hawaii. Good morning, Ramsey. How are you? Good morning, Jay. I'm doing well. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on the show. Let me, let me get some context for a moment. Uh, Hawaii Energy. Uh, this is a, a special agency created a few years ago to incentivize, to encourage, to promote energy efficiency in our state. Tell me how it works. That's correct, Jay. Happy to. And so we are funded by all of our electric bills in a, a HECO territory, um, formerly known as HECO, MECO, and HELCO. Um, and if, if you are a resident or a business uh, within the Hawaiian electric territories, then a small portion of our electric bills come into a fund uh, that we steward back out responsibly uh, in the form of energy efficiency rebates. Um, very cost effective. It's the most cost effective measure we can take in our step towards 100% clean energy. And uh, we've been doing this for about 10 years now, Jay, that Hawaii Energy has been around. And um, we have programs and educational uh, programs for both, again, residents, uh, all of us who live in Hawaii and businesses. And uh, we, we encourage folks to participate in as many energy efficient upgrades as you can to bring down our overall energy usage here in the Aloha State. Yeah, and the idea being, the idea being that not using energy is the best renewable of all. <laughs> that's right it's, it's no imposition on the environment it's 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 free <laughs> not to use energy <laughs> that's right and that unused energy lasts a long time we just keep not using it <laughs> <laughs> yeah and we've been following you for those 10 years too so what kind of programs uh, you know have you evolved to what are your favorite programs at hawaii energy right now Oh, let yeah, me say before COVID, because I want to ask you what happened <laughs> since COVID. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, LED lights continue to be a strong way to save energy. Um, the technology has just advanced so much from the old days of incandescence and fluorescence to now LED lighting. Um, but believe it or not, air conditioning technology has improved significantly as well. There are a lot of companies looking into cleaner refrigerants technology, lower greenhouse gas um, refrigerants, pollutants. Uh, and with that comes a lot of the efficiency um, analysis as well. And so there are, are new ways to manage our buildings so that they use air conditioning more efficiency, efficiently in new technologies and, and even in our homes. And of course we have rebates for those. Um, one of the unsung heroes are transformers. Uh, these boring gray boxes, not the fun uh, animated kind from our childhood or not the fun <laughs> movies that you see in Hollywood. My but wife loves transformers, those movies. Um, She's yeah. not a child. <laughs> <laughs> for all ages fair enough uh, but these transformers can save a significant amount of energy um they, they're in buildings for at least 30 years um upwards of 40 to 50 even and so uh, the current existing technology that are probably hidden in your janitorial closets in, in all of our commercial buildings are, are pretty outdated and uh, there's a significant opportunity to upgrade there um they're they run 24 7 and so any uh equipment that runs all day all night is going to have an opportunity to save energy. Um, on the residential side, water heating is a, a big uh, user of electricity right behind air conditioning if your home has that. We all have water heating in our homes. Um, we have good solar water heating rebates and, and even heat pump water heating rebates. So consider um, taking a glance at where your hot water comes from at home and see what you can do about upgrading that as well. But that, again, to your point, that was all pre-COVID were some of our, our hot ticket items. I think, yeah. So, uh, you know, what comes to mind when I hear you describe that is a, um, there's a kind of algorithm involved. What I mean, and I, I really like your thoughts about this, is, is when, when you have a particular kind of energy efficiency device, there's many of them, there's many systems to, to be efficient with, um, then you want to find out exactly how much efficiency is it generating. You want to get some kind of metrics on it. And you want to see, for example, whether it's old technology, and maybe, as you said, uh, it needs to be upgraded or updated 
uh, to be more efficient. And then there's a new metric on that. And then you have all these different possibilities. I mean, it's endless and it's probably growing, uh, you know, in terms of the technology to make energy more efficient. That, that's what technology is as far as energy is concerned in, in large part. So my question is, um, how do you do the metrics? How do you say that this kind of energy efficiency, energy efficiency system or device or technology is generating um, a return of say um, X, X value? And this one is X minus, and this one is X plus. Uh, then you have priorities, I guess. And so the, the one that gives you the best return for your buck, is that the one you focus on? Is that, is that where you put the rebates? Uh, or is it that one? Or is it all of them? Um, it sounds like a very complicated algorithm, but tell me how it works. <laughs> You're speaking my language now. My engineering mind uh, gears are turning, and I'm, I could talk to you about spreadsheets and algorithms all day. Um, we do have a team of energy engineers. We have an outside evaluation team of engineers who also looks at our numbers and vets them. One, again, because as I mentioned in the start, we're spending our public dollars at the end of the day, and we need to make sure that we do so transparently and that the energy saving equipment that we're incentivizing is in fact going to save energy. Um, so there is a lot of measurement and verification that goes into this. Um, there are some uh, round assumptions that we can make, but in many cases we're doing um, measurements on the ground and uh, doing some electric bill analyses, uh, what we call regression mm. modeling to account mm -hmm. for any variables oh, I love that it, I love are it. I love it taken into consideration. Like <laughs> 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 and uh, we're calculating the energy saved and, and able to go back and review um, in fact, the outside engineering firm does that at the end of our, our year. They'll go back and verify that equipment was in fact installed and is operating as intended. Uh, and they'll make sure that our program has accurately accounted for that savings and will either decrease or potentially increase the amount of savings that we've contributed toward our 100% clean energy goal. So a lot of energy efficient ninjas working behind the scenes to calculate the savings from um, each of these equipment items. And it is a line by line. Every single rebate we have, uh, every measure we have a rebate for is calculated uh, in one way or another. And then we are able to roll that all up into the larger overall savings. And, and so you mentioned it, you know, some of my pr favorite uh, equipment are those that bring in a lot of the energy savings, but also those that I like to highlight that aren't well known. Uh, people um, begin to become more aware of where their energy is being used. Again, if your water heater sits in a closet outside or your transformer is hidden in some storage room in your basement, you forget that it's there and it's costing you money every month on your electric bill. And so bringing that awareness to light is uh, very important to Hawaii Energy's mission as well. Yeah, so this suggests a kind of an outreach thing where, um, so I um, maybe I got a rebate, maybe I should have a rebate. Um, are you going to come and look? Are you going to tell, tell me my water heater is in the wrong place? It's next to the oven, for example. <laughs> 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 Your two heating appliances right next to each other. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things that um, nationally efficiency programs are looking into are virtual home inspections. And so that is something that's being explored, um, again, nationwide, just how, how can we do a phone call, maybe even a Zoom call or FaceTime if residents are comfortable mm -hmm. and help them to assess what their energy use is. Um, walking through, you know, one of my favorite tips is to walk through your home from one end of the the house to another end uh, and unplug everything. Maybe you leave your refrigerator plugged in, but unplug everything else and then go back through and plug in only the appliances that you need to use. And you'll be surprised at some of the things that are plugged in that you didn't even realize were still plugged in. Ancient phone chargers, perhaps uh, old game systems that are just collecting dust. That was, that was in my case, one of the things we found. Um, but just really understanding, again, from wall to wall within your home, what is it that is using electricity and where can I go ahead and uh, upgrade that? Oh, yeah. So you don't have to be there. Um, you know, I'm thinking that uh, it'd be nice to have an engineer walk through my house, but I, I probably don't need to have an engineer walk through my house. I can walk through my house myself. If I just put my common sense on, maybe talk to you on the phone or maybe uh, on right. Zoom, um, I can find out from you how I can check my own system to see whether it is running at a reasonably optimal, you know, set of circumstances. Am I right? 
Absolutely. And, and we put out videos and um, guidelines on our website uh, so that to, to help people do exactly that. Um, if it's a product or an equipment that we offer a rebate for, then there will be energy savings because we've already calculated that. And so as, as part of the third party efficiency program, it's also kind of a third party stamp of approval that this equipment has been vetted and will save energy. Sure, sure. And that's something we do on, on our end. You know, um, Believe it or not, there are equipment out there that claim to save energy that in fact are not impactful or maybe just not right for the climate in Hawaii. And so we're vetting that as well. So you can trust that there will be energy savings from installing and operating equipment on our menu of items, both in the residences and in businesses, um, that they will save energy because we've done our homework. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's very valuable because, I mean, like anything else, and, and we're finding out in the, in the throes of uh, COVID that people will sell you anything and they, they may not really be telling you exactly what it will do. So um, how can... How, how much energy can I save? How can I reduce my energy bill? Uh, just give me a rough idea, you know, make, impress me, impress me, Ramsey, a rough idea of how much energy yeah. I can save if I get efficient from an ordinary, an ordinary user, you know, who doesn't, who doesn't really care too much about it to a yeah. user who does care about it. What's the yeah. spread? Yeah, well, we're looking at a solid $50 of saving. The spread would probably be 20 to $100 um, a year in savings uh, easily with some of the efficiency measures that we have. Uh, you might find this interesting. We recently um, did an analysis and found that uh, in the summer months, uh, especially the more humid months in Hawaii, our residential electric bills tend to be about 18 to 20% higher than in the cooler months. And so of course that's heavily attributed to air conditioning, maybe a little bit of, of more people being in the house due to uh, summer vacation and that sort of thing. Um, but for the most part, it's attributed to air conditioning loads. And so anything we can do to make sure we're using our air conditioning wisely, whether you're installing a smart thermostat that's gonna sense occupancy or, or make sure that you're only cooling enough that, um, that you need, making sure you turn it off when you leave the house, you're not pre-cooling and coming home to winter wonderland, uh, even your ceiling fans and your floor fans, you want to make sure those are off when no one's in the room, because um, contrary to popular belief, uh, just having the fan running isn't actually going to make your room cooler. Uh, the way a fan works, it, is it makes your skin feel cooler as the movement of the air passes over your skin. So if there's no one in the room, then there's no need to run the fan. Um, and so, again, I hope, hope those numbers are impressive enough for you. And, and another impressive number we have is a, a $5 energy kit uh, that you can get, get from our, our website, um, Hawaii, hawaiienergy.com slash promotions. And in it, they have uh, some LED light bulbs, um, low flow water fixtures, because again, if we slow down uh, how much water we're using in the sinks and in your kitchen sink, when you're doing dishes and we use less hot water um, and also in our showers so there's a low flow shower fixture and also a smart strip so a lot of times we have these fancy entertainment systems now and you think when you turn something off it's it's off but of course there are those phantom loads that are running day and night and these smart power strips help to uh, turn those that equipment off when you're not using it um, making sure that when the TV is off, you can also shut down that Blu-ray player, maybe the game system and subsequent other ancillary uh, equipment. Yeah. yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Uh, you know, surely we have the technology to turn all these, um, you know, phantom power kinds of um, appliances off. I mean, I, <clears throat> should I go out and buy one or do you have the, these outlets where, you know, from say, uh, I don't know, say 10 o'clock at night to six o'clock in the morning, it's off. It, it doesn't have to be on, it's off. And I'm saving all the, you know, the base load kind of uh, energy I might be using with the phantom power. Um, what, should I get that? How do I get that? And how much can you help me get that? Yeah, you can get it from uh, some of your retailers, believe it or not, um, the best buys of the world. But we also do have it online, which might be a little more convenient now. Um, of course, you can probably find them on Amazon. Um, we do have a rebate for them, though, on our website. Again, go to hawaiienergy.com slash promotions, and you can click through there. It's actually what we call our online marketplace for um, many energy efficient pieces of equipment for your home, the smaller things, again, like the light bulbs, little switches, uh, and these smart power strips. And there's actually two versions of the smart power strip. You can get an advanced smart power strip, which is um, even more um, 
ha has even more bells and whistles to it. Um, but these will, the way the smart power strip works to your point is uh, you have a control, controlled equipment. You see it in an entertainment center, it's like your TV. And then you have all of this other equipment that you don't really use if the TV is off, right? You don't need your Blu-ray player or your DVD player, and you don't need your, your sound bar speaker on. And so those will automatically turn off when the smart strip senses that the TV is off. And so right. you press one off button and it's, it's the effect of unplugging all of that ancillary equipment. Uh, and so that will really save all night, again, all day when you're, when you're not using that equipment, it'll save on that energy use. And it's, it's just seeping out and it's a vampire sucking your, your money out of your That's wallet. Right. We need to get that under control. <laughs> so uh, now sometimes you give rebates, sometimes you give, you give equipment away free sometimes. Can you give me a handle on when one is appropriate and when the other is appropriate? Sure. Um, when we're doing our education um, for different communities, you know, we'll often throw in prizes out there, even even in some of our um, conferences and presentations, just to get things moving. I think also, you know, when we see that there are certain uh, uh, communities that are harder hit uh, from any type of uh, a disaster, or or that are just having a harder time adopting energy efficient practices. You know, part of our mandate is to make sure that um, we have energy efficiency that's accessible and affordable to all. And so in those cases, we may increase our rebate and, and it may be depending on the cost of the upgrade, it may be virtually free uh, and, and zero charge upfront to the customer. Uh, and, and in those cases, we definitely let people know that this is the type of program we're operating. For the most part, in some cases, you know, we, I uh, like to see that the customer, the, the resident or the business is willing to put some money toward this efficient upgrade. Again, energy efficiency is one of the few upgrades that you can make that's actually going to pay you back on your electric bill. Uh, and so we want people to understand that and know that, hey, if you're still even paying a small percent of your efficiency upgrade, that's a good thing. Your your payback is going to be one year, two years maybe. And after that, you'll be making making a profit on this investment. It's a great investment. Now, the other thing is that if you do that, if you get skin in the game, if you're in a kind of a partnership with Hawaii Energy and with um, energy efficiency in general, you're going to be more aware. You're going to be thinking about efficiency because it's now it's part of your system, your, your home or your business, and uh, it's part of your business thinking um, about, about um, trying to save money on energy. So even if you, you get a rebate or you're encouraged, incentivized to do one kind of thing, it'll make you conscious of doing some other kinds of things. Maybe they don't require any money, um, but that will nevertheless give you more efficiency. So it's a mindset thing, isn't it? I sure hope so. You know, we're not able to measure mindset just yet, but uh, just elevating folks to be able to think a little more outward where they're uh, aware of, of their actions and the impact on others. And of course, the impact on our energy use and our environment is certainly an undercurrent. I think that all of us at Hawaii Energy feel and, and want to be a part of, and it's why we come to work every day. So are you, are you going to be more... Uh, or less or equally relevant in the years that are coming between now and reaching our target. I'm making the assumption we will reach our target of, you know, 100% clean energy by 2045. Some people say 2040. Um, but uh, is Hawaii energy always relevant as we proceed down that path? Absolutely. Always always relevant and increasing. In fact, uh, energy efficiency as a baseline is just, uh, again, a wise investment. It's the, the cheapest uh, energy, renewable energy, as you mentioned, you know, step that we can take. Uh, additionally, you know, we've been tasked with distributing some electric vehicle charge station funds. Electric vehicles are a known factor in our movement of progression toward 100% clean energy. And so we're looking at, you know, there is this argument between a cart and a horse, and uh, do you get more electric vehicles first or more charge stations first? And so our kuleana, part of our kuleana is to help um, spur the industry for more electric vehicle charge stations, especially in the new construction zone, um, which we're, we're pushing even legislatively. And then what can we do to, to help get electric vehicle charge stations installed at the new construction? It's so much more cost effective to get it in before you've poured the concrete and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and, and also grid services in general. So 
looking at um, smarter systems uh, that can speak with the grid, that can help the, the demand and the load of buildings actually match that which the generation is providing because more and more of our generation is intermittent due to solar and, and wind and other renewables. And so having that as a, a smarter grid system, Hawaii Energy is involved and will be increasingly involved in that in the years to come. You know, I, would, I wanted to ask you also um, about these companies, uh, they're engineering companies that come and work for mm, larger companies and particularly property management, property ownership companies, mm -hmm. you know, the kind of companies that are in the Building Owners Association, like downtown. Uh, one, one comes to mind is Amoresco. This is an engineering company, right, that tries to save owners money on using electricity. So do you engage with them? Is there any interaction? You tell them what to do? Do they tell you what they have done? Do you share advice and information? Indeed we do. Uh, Amoresco is one of our clean energy allies and we have a whole group of nearly 200 clean energy allies that are working in the energy efficiency space, both in residences and businesses. And you mentioned the keyword there, money, Jay, and where the Amorescos of the world are, are able to help support these energy efficiency upgrades is to provide a return on your electric bill that is going to be matched to the amount of investment that you've put into the building. And so they'll do an audit and they'll identify all of these what we call ECMs in the industry or energy conservation measures and they'll work with the owner to put together a portfolio and a plan on what to install and when and how to finance it, how to fund this thing so that, that you get a positive revenue stream as soon as possible. Uh, I won't speak for those those contractors, you know, each of them have their own way of doing business, um, but they, suffice to say they are still doing business even today, even nowadays, um, and they're making it as a helpful and simple and streamlined for any of our our BOMA, our you know business owners and managers and um, uh, downtown office buildings type facilities, all the way to even smaller facilities that are are able to and needing to finance uh, some of their efficiency upgrades. There are also new financing mechanisms that are coming online, um, and they're they're very innovative. And they just help you get your work done sooner, faster, sometimes with zero down. And again, you're able to pay it back on what would have been a, a higher electric bill, now a decreased electric bill. Um, one of the ways that we do that, I'm going to tie this into your earlier question about measuring energy use. We have a new program. It's only a weeks old, real-time energy management. And so in real time, these contractors are measuring how much energy is being used and are able to uh, measure... Uh, baseline that against the previous measurement and seeing if there's a trend of increasing energy use, they will literally call an employee or call a facility manager on the ground and help them to identify and assess where the savings uh, or where this increased energy usage actually is coming from and how they can save energy. And so that requires a, a lot of metering and monitoring that we're get, giving an incentive on. Um, but it also provides a long-term relationship between, really, uh, between contractor and customer, right? And so the contractor is not just installing a piece of equipment and walking away anymore. More and more what we're going to see is a relationship so that contractor helps the customer manage their energy usage, be aware of it, as you mentioned, and uh, see a trend of energy savings over time. And there's going to be operational things that you can do to make sure you turn things on and off only when needed. Maybe even you're getting your employees involved, doing some education with your uh, your staff so that they're not turning on lights or, or calling for air conditioning when they don't need to be, right? Um, they're, the, the folks in the office know best where energy can be saved. Um, they know where the hot spots are and where that freezing cold desk is that whoever sits there needs three blankets and they can help inform the contractors uh, on where they can where the opportunities are for savings for balancing the energy use within the building. And so that's something we're definitely looking into and happy to work with some of those large companies. Yeah, it's all about technology. That's I always say, uh, you know, energy te technology was first. Now there's energy and energy is the new technology. You're talking, you're talking about technology, Ramsey. So let me ask you one thing. It keeps popping up and, and that is mm -hmm. COVID. You know, you, you have a certain way of operating. I think we, we got the landscape. I, I hope it doesn't today. keep popping up too much. <laughs> I mean, you would be both. <laughs> so how has it affected uh, energy efficiency? How has it affected Hawaii energy? I mean, it's affected everyone, um, but I have a feeling that you have ways to deal with it. Can you talk about it? 
Absolutely. Well, I have about a dozen slides here I would like to show um, about what Hawaii Energy is doing and pivoting to for COVID recovery and response. And uh, on the second slide there, we're able to see um, the impact of energy efficiency on jobs. Uh, and it's been a huge um, industry, and you may have seen in the news that it's been heavily impacted, actually. Um, so, you know, 2.3 million people um, in the energy efficiency sector in, in the U.S., uh, about over 5,000 in Hawaii. And if we go to the next slide, as we all know locally, unemployment has been huge. And uh, we're going to see that there was a massive loss in total energy efficiency jobs uh, nationwide, but we were hit pretty hard, nearly 2,000 total jobs on hold. 50% um, of our own clean energy allies that I mentioned have said that they had to downsize, which is just heartbreaking in, in our industry. And so um, I want to go back to that clean energy ally survey uh, that we mentioned. And uh, what slide four shows us when that comes up for you is some of the results there. And one of the big takeaways in that teardrop on the left is that 95% of our clean energy allies are still able to operate. They are deemed essential businesses. And uh, we do get calls from businesses asking if they can still continue their energy efficiency upgrades. And we say, yes, uh, the energy efficient industries are still working. Um, we're experiencing heavy delays, 93% project delays. 81% uh, decrease in sales from our clean energy allies and uh, over 50% um, supply chain disruption. And, and again, that 50% downsize in staff. Um, PPE is of course a limited commodity right now and, and it's difficult to get. So we have some of our CEAs that are having a difficulty getting that. And, and then uh, again, a quarter of our customers still didn't know that our CEAs were in operation. And so something that we're doing is spreading the word. We're letting our customers know, answering the phones and, and telling people, hey, this is something that we're still able to participate in and, and now might be a good time to do so. Uh, and so in, in our shift, you know, we're aligning with the state's recovery plan. And so healing Hawaii and phase one being stabilization. Um, you know, lucky enough, we have a forward thinking public utilities commission who actually gave us some guidance and we summarize them here in three bullet points. Ensure reliable and affordable essential services. Achieve clean energy and our climate goals, which is great because that's a good investment to make at any time, especially now. And then support economic recovery from COVID-19 emergency. So you're gonna see that our following slides kind of build to this. In the commercial sector, um, what we have are increase in education and training online, just like this, where I get to talk to you, Jay, um, and, and doing more than ever. We actually have seen an increase in participation as well, maybe because people's schedules allow for a little more online training and not needing to, to drive around the island to different conference venues. And we're also extending some of our increased incentives from this year. And we're looking to increase incentives to next year. Um, you know, what would it look like to have folks apply for maybe an increased incentive, maybe a business that's been hit hard, but they've identified a way they can save energy on their electric bill. If they can ask us for an increased incentive uh, and they can and let us know why, and we can, we can check it against the budget, that may be something that we're going to consider here in the next month or so um, as we start our, our program year 2020 on July 1st. Uh, so that's a way we're pivoting. Again, extending incentives, looking at new incentives. I, I mentioned the real-time energy management. We're also really focused on commercial new construction right now because, again, if you can get that efficient equipment in at the start, uh, then that's the way to go for the lifetime of that building will be more efficient. We've put out sector tips and guide sheets as well um, for the restaurant sector the grocery sector, some of, some of these hardest hit sectors that are still in operation. Even the multifamily sector, those of us who live in apartment buildings and condominiums, um, we're home all the time now. And so that, that AOAO um, board and that multifamily facility engineer needs to really be paying attention to how they're using energy. Um, and so having these tip sheets have been really helpful in, in informing our community on what they can do to save energy. And then some new technologies. So uh, HVAC UV light disinfection, right? In, the, um, in, in our systems, is that something that we want to be promoting? Is there an energy efficient form of it? If not, uh, what is the energy 
increase that I can expect. Um, you know, it's been recommended to use increased filtration, uh, filters that are more effective at filtering out different diseases. Uh, well, well, what can we do to be able to balance that if energy impact from those tighter filters? Uh, for residents, we've also been able to provide some tips. We've been on, on the news, uh, most of our local channels, just explaining, you know, what people staying home more often now, more than ever, can do to save energy. Um, again, be raising that energy awareness. We've got games that people are playing at home on their mobile mobile devices to help get energy tips. Uh, and we've also increased our incentives. And so I'm gonna hover right here for a little while on these increased incentives because they're pretty significant and they're fairly new, uh, weeks old, I would say, uh, most of them. Um, but if, if you recognize any of that, uh, the, the equipment there, refrigerators, window ACs, uh, maybe a pool pump that we can put a VFD on to control when it comes on, um, all of that equipment is great, and those are increased incentives. The solar water heating one I mentioned, uh, that being one of our standard technologies, is now more than ever a higher incentive. And so if you were thinking on it before, thinking about it before, now's the time to act. Uh, this is a great incentive. A residential air conditioning as we get ready for summer. Uh, again, we know that um, those with AC and those with cooling, 18 to 20 percent at least increase in our electric bills on average. And so getting an energy efficient um, air conditioner is important. We even have one for Energy Star window ACs if that's all that can fit in and maybe some of the um, spaces in your home. Uh, we also created these awesome cakey resources. So working with the kids as well, some coloring and games um, and just getting them uh, aware of energy at a young age. It reminds me of the games we used to play at Zippy's Dine In uh, when you're waiting for your food to get there. Um, so break out the crayons for those kids and, and color some of those resources. Uh, and then next, you know, following our state's recovery plan, we have phase two uh, reopening the Kama'aina economy and, and phase three, renew and rebuild the long-term recovery. So some of the key sectors we're focusing on on the, on the next slide uh, are gonna be government, uh, new construction, as I, messaged, as, as I mentioned, office buildings, um, also the multifamily um, sector that we've been working with already has, has expressed interest in doing more efficiency um, now that their residents again are home more often. Um, a couple of other sectors we're gonna focus on, hotels. You know, our, our local hotels are really down right now, um, but for some of them, it's actually an opportunity during this low occupancy stage to install new equipment and upgrade the systems that they had. Uh, so what kind of increased incentives can we provide them um, that's still gonna be cost effective and yet uh, encourage them to take that step, uh, even in this time of uncertainty. So we're working with some of our hotel customers there. Um, another case is that retro commissioning and, and energy audits are gonna be important because they've gotta balance their system that they're looking to upgrade uh, to recover from COVID-19. You know, they're putting in new safety policies, maybe new ventilation policies um, that they've never had before. And this is not how their buildings were designed to operate initially. And so they may need to rebalance the whole building. And, and that's something to, important to keep in mind uh, for us uh, as we offer some of these new incentives that uh, we can encourage folks to take retro commissioning and energy audits seriously um, now. So hotels and even the healthcare industry, uh, believe it or not, healthcare industry is looking to still upgrade energy efficiency. Uh, our rural healthcare industry uh, was hit pretty hard as they had to shift uh, to for COVID-19. And so how, how can we help those rural healthcare facilities as well to lower their electric costs, healthcare being quite, having quite a high uh, electric bill. The next four slides are just going to build to a quick program strategy that I want to end on. Uh, so providing financial support, um, enhancing our funding, maybe offering this idea of a, of a grant that I mentioned that folks can apply for mm. and will show us that they're actually going to invest that money in energy efficiency. Next, we've got new ways to connect. So utilizing that virtual digital technologies, maybe doing those virtual in-home inspections uh, or audits and, and working with our business com customers in the same frame. Uh, our improved environment will be next. So indoor air quality or IAQ is something that is often uh, cited these days. And so what can we do to offset some of the energy uh, consequences of making sure that we're flushing our spaces with clean, fresh air? 
um, maybe we can balance that out with uh, another energy savings equipment in, in another space. And finally, um, looking at some downturn opportunities. So as I mentioned, with lower occupancy in hotels or office buildings, uh, taking advantage of this for those that are able to make the most of uh, the time where we can be upgrading to energy efficient equipment so that in our recovery and for a long term um, savings, they will be able to see a decreased electric bill. I hope I summarized uh, enough for you or some of our recovery plans for Hawaii Energy uh, post COVID-19. Um, and as uh, you'll especially see some firm changes come July 1 in our new program year 2020. Well, maybe we can check back with you again then. But it, but it strikes me, Ramsey, that you're on it. Hawaii Energy is on it on every aspect of it. You're, you're a tech company and you're using the technology and the analysis uh, to handle it every way you can. Thank you so much for coming around. Thank you for your participation and your support of ThinkTech. We greatly appreciate that. Hope to see you again soon, Ramsey. Thank you for having me, Jay. Aloha. Aloha.